hi guys welcome back to my channel how are you guys doing today first of all i want to say a very big thank you for the love on my last video thank you for all your congratulatory messages and for all your prayers thank you thank you thank you so much i'm very grateful if you're new here or if this is my first video you're seeing hello hi welcome to the world gold channel Thank you for being here. Please don't let this be the last video you're seeing. Remember to click the subscribe button, turn on your bell notification so that you can get notified every time I post a new video. And if you are a returning subscriber, oh my goodness, you guys are the OGs. <laughs> my OGs, you know, the real Gs. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for watching. You already know how much I love you. <laughs> Thank you very much and welcome back. Yes, straight to today's video. From the thumbnail, you can already tell what today's video is about. So in today's video, I'll be giving you guys a lowdown of how we got our Canada PR in exactly three months. And by three months, I mean from the point when we submitted our application to the point when we got our passport back. So let's go straight into the video. So the journey for, to Canada actually started way, way before we moved to the UK. While my husband and I were still dating, we were already thinking of, um, okay, we're going to get married, we need to settle, we don't want to settle in Nigeria, where do we want to go? As far back as 2019, we were already talking about moving to Canada because Canada was the top of our list. We didn't even think of UK. Um, and come 2020, we got married and uh, we started to take steps towards Canada. The first step was, you know, ensuring I did my work because I just finished my master's with the University of Lagos. So I did my West. West is the um, examining body to evaluate your certificate. So um, I did my West in 2020. And, you know, the next thing was I should start preparing for IELTS. So between 2020 and 2021, the opportunity for the UK came. And at the time, it appeared very fast, you know. And at that time, Canada had a huge backlog. I'm sure that there are some people that are watching this that can relate. They know and experience. And unfortunately, some people are still in that process since that time. And I really pray for ease for you if you are one of those. But, you know, like Canada had a huge backlog because of COVID. And, you know, people had application that, you know, the application were pending for two years, pending for, you know, months and months and months. So obviously, the UK came and, you know, we could do process UK in three months. We jumped on that train and, you, you know, we, we, we found ourselves in the UK and we made a life for ourselves there. And we actually paused everything in Canada at the time. We were just trying to settle. I tried to finish my school, you know, sort things out and make things a bit better. Unfortunately, the pathway to settlement in the UK is not something that is very clear. Maybe not clear is the word. It's not something that is very easy. So, um, like you know, you know, you either have to look for an employment that will sponsor you to stay, or you know, to be honest, I think that's the option, the main option that is the most popular one. I'm sure there are other ones, you know, that you could apply for, but you know, it's very, very, it's not as straightforward. Canada, on the other hand, had a clear pathway to PR. And, you know, all you just need to do is have experience, have all the things that, you know, that will qualify you and give you more points. And just be in the pool. Okay, so the journey to this movement officially started in 2022. Because before you can even enter the pool or apply to Canada Express Entry, you have to have IELTS ready, less than two years old IELTS. You have to have your WEST ready, less than five year old WEST. So... Um, my husband wrote IOTS actually in um, June or July 2022. He just wrote it, you know, um, and he did very well. So it was left for me to write. At, at that time, I was actually even pregnant. So um, I eventually wrote my first IOTS in December of 2022. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't score what I wanted. <laughs> I didn't get enough score. Uh, it was quite low. So my overall score at the time was, I think, seven. And, you know, the key um, part that's listening and speaking that was supposed to really is, I didn't, you know, maximize my point. So unfortunately, I was down. And, and then afterwards, I gave birth, you know, for a while, I was really, really down because of that. You know, I kept pumping myself and, you know, hoping to rewrite it. Anyway, let me leave all the story. 
um i rewrote my iots in september of 2023 that was when i rewrote my iots don't ask me why it took that long you know but i rewrote it in september of 2023 and as god we had it i had just enough mark you know like the the difference was massive you know from what i had before and what i had in september and my overall score was 7.5 but my listening was 8.5 and my speaking was 8 and to be honest for me you know like my, for me i feel like those two areas are very very important that if you can ace it you know and just try and get at least enough in the remaining two and by enough i mean seven i think one should be okay please note that i am not an immigration advisor i am not giving you an advice i am sharing my experience i, I need to put out the disclaimer so i passed my lts in um, september and i called my friend to me she you know okay i passed i have everything now what do we do we created a profile for myself and you know to be honest when i was entering you know like when i was going to create my profile and do everything in my mind you know i just thought of bad as a bad they'll call us in 2024 you know how canada does their things and all of that you know so i created my profile completely you know within that week and to my surprise in october on the 26th of october 2023 we got invitation to apply so before i jump to that part i want to give you a backstory so in may of 2023 canada opened a new pathway you know in the same express entry pathway so before it was just express entry you know and and the scores they used to call used to be around 400 and you know towards the end of 400 like 480 470 you know you you even 470 was a struggle at some point you know for that was before may 2023 then from may 2023 they introduced a new pathway called category based draw cbd so that category based draw meant uh, means that there are some you know six categories were the ones that you know were highlighted in that you know for 2023 so those category under the cbd are stem french healthcare trade occupations agriculture and transportation so there were six categories that you know they highlighted and for these categories they dropped the points you know and if you are in the pool you know and you have any experience in all of this category and the beautiful thing is for some of those categories like healthcare and um, stem for instance all you need to qualify was six months full-time experience or one year part-time experience that's the equivalent in the part-time while i was a student in the uk i worked in healthcare and you know immediately i got to the uk in 2021 the first job i got was in care i got a personal support um worker role and I, I did it almost throughout you know until um you know i got my last job before i left the uk i did it for more than like for about two years so it was that category based draw that you know my nomination came from so on 26th of October, I remember on that day, my husband and I were just, you know, we're, we were driving, you know, around Birmingham and we're thinking, okay, what's next? What do we even do? You know, like, what do we want to do? Do we want to intensify looking for sponsorship within the UK or do we want to go to school again in Canada? Do we want to, you know, like, we're just thinking of other options that we need to decide. We're already on post-study visa and it was already a couple of months on post-study visa. So, obviously, the fear and, you know, the strategizing was very important at that point on the 26th of october my darling friend tomiwa called me from canada and she was like we take your meal she was so excited on the call take your meal they've given you invitation to apply they've given you i saw it in the news they called your category i'm like am i okay what is this girl saying i'm, like, I'm not seeing anything i've not seen anything I'm like check check i'm sure i'm sure your NOC is there i just checked and i saw the mail congratulations congratulations invitation to apply i was like wow my husband and i looked at ourselves and we were so you know in hall we did not expect it to come that fast we only just entered the pool last month we didn't expect it to come that fast so what that meant was immediately we swung into action we started to put our documents together applied for police reports police reports in the uk was the one that took one month to come out 
every other thing you know came you know came out then another thing that took a bit of time to come out because of mix up and postage was my bank statement but you know every other thing came together also i wanted to mention that the noc i used was 33102 now if you look at this noc you see that it's titled nurse aid and some other things However, if you go into the job description, you see that it's very, very similar to what we do as personal support workers, as healthcare workers in the UK. So what they are looking at is not necessarily the title. What they are looking at is the um, you know, job description. Do you match this job description? If your role matches this job description, then I'll say consider using that NOC. You know, this is not a this is not an immigration advice or a legal advice. It's just my experience I'm sharing and I'm, hopeful, I'm, I'm hoping that you know someone will find it useful is why I'm sharing it. So back to the story. We submitted all of our documents on the 22nd of December, 2023. That was when everything was complete, you know, and we paid the fee. And the next thing was for us to wait, right? So fast forward to the 27th of February, 2024. We got the mail to go and do our medicals and our biometrics we got the two mails on the same day so you know we got the request um the way they do it now for people that have done it in the past they used to do medicals you know once they got invitation to apply and they would submit with their medicals however they changed it since last year um september that you know you should hold on to get an invitation to do medicals and i think one of the reasons why they changed this was because people's medicals were expiring because of the long wait so they had to go and do medicals again so in order to mitigate that you know time risk they they decided to be the one to give you the invitation to do your medicals and biometrics so immediately we got the mail same day trust my husband very sharp guy action action man <laughs> he booked you know the next available slot you know in london we had to drive from birmingham to london to go get it done as god we have it we got the same day you know third of march to do our medical so we did biometrics in the morning we went to the tls center in london did biometrics in the morning and you know around 12 we did biometrics around 9 a.m and then by our, by 12 noon was when our medicals was the same day so we we're able to finish everything on that day and they transmitted Moin Jesus medical on that same day so by the next day we already saw that Moin Jesus medical was transmitted and was uploaded that was on the 3rd of March so and then our own you know came through on the 6th and 7th of March both of us so it, it showed completed on our profile okay so at this point it was just to wait because afterwards it's just a background check and we're like mm, over to you god we don't want drama we don't want additional documents required you know we don't want anything because you know we, we saw stories there were stories everywhere people sharing now they waited after medicals months and months and like god you know <laughs> the tension was there anyway to cut the long story short on the 11th of march we got additional documents required mail and this meant that we had to provide more documents first of all my mind was like jesus what is this <laughs> you know additional documents required you know can be very very tricky it could be anything you know it could mess your application up there have been so much so many stories everywhere people sharing their experiences and you know like i was very afraid i'm not going to lie when i saw that mail i couldn't even open it i just showed my husband you know we're at a dinner with friends and then you know i was very very scared i was like holy spirit what is this what is this we we're supposed to get our pass <laughs> they were supposed to you know request our passport next why are we getting this mail? anyway i gave it to my husband to open it he opened it as the man that he is <laughs> because i did not have deliver he opened it and then he saw that it was for him they needed him to prove to show proof of residence in the United States that you know um, that you are stayed in the United States of America for six months or more, you know, and it came. It was funny because he has never been to the U.S. He has never even gotten the U.S. visa before. So, you know, um, first of all, I was relieved that it was something that looked like an error from you know the visa officer's place because he has never been to the U.S. 
is only tied to the u.s was his master's maybe that was what prompted it because his master's degree was from the university of the people is a u.s um university but it's fully it was fully online so you trust my husband is an action man so he swung into action he quickly researched what should we do did this did this that same night he paid fbi did everything to just get the police reports just in case you know is really something that he didn't want anything to delay our application so he, he, he applied on fbi website for police report and everything and um and then we got home and it was like i think i should just reply them and explain that you know i don't really have ties like i believe they will understand i was like oh yeah now he composed the mail explaining with details that the only ties he had in the u.s is um his masters and he's done now he's not you know it was everything was online he has never been to the us he has never gotten you know their visa and you know he just explained it well put his certificates as an attachment his transcript you know just make sure that everything was there you know in the letter of explanation and then erase the web form and submitted and as god we have it he submitted you know the mail was acknowledged the next day so we got the additional documents required on the 11th we responded on the 12th we got that they've gotten it on the 13th of march and then on the 14th of march 2024 we got the mail ready for visa <laughs> it felt like a dream i'm like ha jesus is this how you work <laughs> Oh my god i'm sorry that i'm a mess but you know i'm just really really grateful thinking back about the experience it was really a lot it was intense you know and thinking about it now you know god was just too good we got ready for visa the next day and we were just glad we sent the mail because we we're like oh should we just wait for police report police report from fbi was going to take two we um two months you know about two months that's what they said and we're like ha uh, of course i know that that was probably the worst case scenario it would most likely come before them but it would really delay us and then we'll have to be waiting 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 you know so thank god he took the initiative to send the letter of explanation at that time because the next you know almost the next day the ready for visa came so immediately we got the mail for ready for visa we went to submit our passport by ourselves at the visa office in london the next day i just took a day off at work my husband took a day off and then we drove to london and then we went to submit our passports by ourselves we could have mailed this but obviously we heard stories of royal men losing people's passports i was like nope we don't want any drama or any stories and at the same time our nigeria travel was you know something we had planned way before then so we didn't want anything that would make our passports stranded or waste time so we're like we'll go by ourselves so we went to submit it by ourselves you know, were able to clear everything and it was transmitted that same day between me and you guys, the passport came back exactly one week. And that was on the 22nd of March, 2024. Uh, we got the mail to come and pick up our passport. It was already a decision has been made. And the decision by the grace of God that was made was our um, COPR stamped on our passport. So it was, it was such a beautiful experience. And now this is why I called it a three-month journey because... It was when I was preparing for this video, while I was scripting this video, that I actually realized that it was three months because the day we submitted was the 22nd of December and the day we got our passport back, that was the final stage of the application, was 22nd of March. And that's 22nd <laughs> January, February, March. That was three months, you know, exactly three months. And, you know, so if we're looking at it from the time we got ITA, yes, we'll say five months. However, I choose to look at it from the time where we submitted because getting ITA, we had not done anything. So the point where we did anything that our application really started was in that December. So that's why I call it three months. So we got our PR in three months. So yes, um, yeah, that's the story. And that was how, you know, God did it for us. You know, God made ways, new pathway came up for us and all. So now, you know because this you know process as simple as it might seem to some other people or you know i know there are people that genuinely desire you know to you know that genuinely desire settlement basically so 
um i'm praying for you again that you know you that you're desiring and you're hearing the story you're beaming with joy and you're saying god you see what you are doing for others god you are in my neighborhood i pray that you know the lord opens the door for you that you know things are working in your favor lines are falling onto you in pleasant places i want to encourage you that if this is your desire and you really want you know settlement and you want to come to canada through permanent residence I'll, uh, I'll encourage you to get your house in order prepare yourself for the opportunity imagine you know we weren't ready at, in that september you know like i took it took courage for me to rewrite my IOTS. i didn't expect that the invitation to apply will come in october so it's the same way it works don't do your IOTS. if you don't pass enough the first time do it again the second time you know try your best to you know study and practice very well make sure you have your west ready all the basic things that you need to even be in the pool get it ready and be in the pool and then leave the rest with god there's a new pathway now for healthcare you know pr on arrival you know read up about that as well try as much as possible to get as, as many information and prepare yourself for that opportunity right so um i'm praying favor for you i'm praying god's favor i'm praying the help of god that you have, you know, got help in, in, in your process, in your application, in the name of Jesus, that all things are working together for your good, that the Lord settles you, the Lord settles your family in the name of Jesus. I pray ease for you in the name of Jesus. I will celebrate. Please share your testimonies in the comment section by the time God does. And finally, if you have any questions, you know, about this process, drop them in the comment section. I'm going to try my best to respond. However, I'll be creating questions. If you remember my friend Kola that we did the UK um, vlog together, you know, we're planning another Q&A session. And this time we want to answer your questions about coming to Canada from anywhere, from Nigeria, from the UK, you know, from anywhere, basically. Let us know your questions in the comment section. I'll collect those questions and, you know, uh, the video is going to come out in the next two weeks. So um, next week, I'm going to break down the category-based draw. I'm going to like explain it and do some screen sharing, try to show you guys how to take advantage of it and then go through some of the occupations and we'll see the job description. Just like, it's your, I, hope, I don't know, I've not done it before, but I'm really hoping that, you know, you people will find it useful. If you'd really like to see the category based job video, please let me know in the comment section. And thank you for watching to this point. If you did. I love you so much and I'm grateful for you. I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>